What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. We're going to record plays for week 15 of the NFL season on DraftKings and FanDuel. If you enjoy, make sure you have a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and let's dive right into it. And as always, if you like what you've seen the screen behind me, it's available completely free for a week over my Patreon with the free week trials. You get access to all the projections that I use each and every single week for DraftKings and FanDuel, which I know a lot of people don't like FanDuel as much as DraftKings, which I totally get. But their new Superflex contests have been awesome so far. I think they've had them for two weeks. And I've gotten first and second in some of the single entries over there so far. So I've been having a blast. So if you're someone like me that hates defenses and worrying about them every single week, you can avoid them over there and have a lot more fun with two quarterbacks. My entire data sheet includes the entire slate sat it out. So if you're trying to find small edges over on Price Picks Underdog, and if you're a user over there, use promo code SteepPen to get that deposit bonus up to $100, especially over on Price Picks around Christmas because they're doing their 12 days of pick miss, which they get nice promos each and every single day leading up until Christmas Day. So go over there and take advantage of it because there's no reason not. Let's talk about some quarterbacks here. I feel like I have talked long enough. And we're going to start in this Dallas and Buffalo game. Should be one of the better games of the week. 50 point over under, which is the second highest of the week, only behind this Washington and Los Angeles game. That's only by half a point. But we have Dak Prescott facing off versus Josh Allen over in Buffalo. 25.75 implied team 12 for the Buffalo Bills. 24 and a quarter for the Dallas Cowboys. One and a half point spread in the Buffalo Bills' favor. And both these quarterbacks present a ton of upside. They've been some of the best fantasy quarterbacks all season long, with averaging right around 270 passing yards per game, two passing touchdowns, throwing the ball nearly identical times, 34 pass attempts per game, yards per attempt is not too far off. Neither is the completion percentage. So these two have been very identical through the year. The one edge that Josh Allen has on Dak Prescott is with his legs. He's averaging nearly one rushing touchdown per game on the season at 0.8, over two designed runs per game, which is not a lot, but he will scramble a lot. 30 rushing yards as well. Oh, Dak Prescott is not immobile. He's averaging 15 rushing yards per game. He just does not have that rushing touchdown upside that Josh Allen offers week in, week out. And these are identical matchups as well, as both teams are allowing the 12th fewest points per game to the position. So I don't really love both of these guys this week. I am definitely going to be cheaper with guys like Brock Purdy and Matthew Stafford. But if you are playing tournaments and you want to stack this game up because you expect it to be an explosion of offense, I get it for tournaments. But everyone is so expensive. Like if you were stacking Josh Allen, you were playing Stephon Diggs, run back options. C.D. Lamb would be the number one guy I like, but he's also a little bit pricey. Tony Pollard's close to $7,000. Brendan Cooks is not absolutely free by any means. Jake Ferguson, maybe. Dalton Kincaid, those are cheaper options. Gabe Davis. But overall, if you want the highest projected scores in this game, it's going to cost you a ton no matter which way you stack it up. And then we have my QB DFS darling, Brock Purdy, who is still too cheap. He needs to be above $7,000. He needs to be close to where Dak Prescott is. And if we're looking at the numbers this year, he has every right to be that expensive. But for whatever reason... DraftKings doesn't like him. FanDuel does a little bit better of a job at pricing him. He's at around $8,500. I think he should be probably right around that range. He's not far off of Dak Prescott. So there's a $1,200 difference on DraftKings between Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott. And there's only 200 bucks on FanDuel. So yes, much better play on DK than he is on FanDuel, but you can play him on both sites. But a 30 and a quarter implied team total here for Purdy on the road. In Arizona, 12 and a half point spread in the 49ers favor, 48 point over under. And there is just no way for him not to succeed in this offense in the position that he is put in week in, week out. He's got a great offensive line. He's got a great coach who can scheme guys wide open each and every single week. And the guys that are getting schemed wide open are all elite talents. Debo Samuel, amazing. Brandon Ayuk, a very polished wide receiver who can make big plays. Same with Debo. You have Chris McCaffrey out of the backfield. And the defense has to respect CMC in the run game. So you get guys wide open almost every single play, it seems like. And then you also have George Kittle. And it's not like he's just dumping the ball off. He's averaging 9.9 .9 yards per attempt, a 70% completion percentage, 275 passing yards per game, and nearly two passing touchdowns. Those numbers are right on par with guys like Dak Prescott and Josh Allen. So keep taking the discount. Keep playing Brock Purdy. Not saying you have to play him in cash this week, but my two favorites so far this weekend, it's only Friday, so things can obviously change. But it looks like Brock Purdy, Matthew Stafford are leading the way for me. Sam Howell, we can kind of talk about him and Stafford, I guess, since we're in the same game here. This is definitely one I am looking to stack up. 50.5 over under, which is the highest of the week, even higher than Buffalo Pills and Dallas Cowboys. 28.5 implied team total for Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Six and a half points spread in their favor. 22 point total for Sam Howe. I prefer Matthew Stafford because I like the Rams offense a ton. Kyron Williams, too cheap. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, two obvious stacking options with Stafford. Sam Howe tends to spread the ball around a little bit, so it's kind of annoying to stack with him because I remember playing Terry McLaurin once, and I'm pretty sure he had zero points with Sam Howe, even though he had 20 fantasy points. Curtis Samuel is there, Jahan Dotson, Logan Thomas, so I like stacking this game up a ton. How would be my tournament option? Matthew Stafford, though, cakewalk matchup versus Washington. They're allowing the second most points in the position, 280 passing yards and over two passing touchdowns. It's time you have for Matthew Stafford this week, especially at only $6,000. He can easily get you 250 and two, maybe even three this weekend, approaching potentially 300 passing yards if this game can stay close, which I think it should. And then Jordan Love of the Green Bay Packers. I was kind of hating on him earlier in the season. While I still don't think he's a great quarterback, he's definitely gotten better 
Looks like Christian Watson's going to be out this week, but we're going to be stuck with Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs, and Tucker Craft. But that just means it's really cheap to stack this team up. So if you want to go with Jordan Love, Jaden Reed, Tucker Craft, and run it back with a guy like Mike Evans, that is super cheap to do. And it's a great matchup versus the Buccaneers, who are allowing the fifth most points in the position and over 280 passing yards per game. So heading over to our build, there's obviously plenty of quarterbacks that I like this week. But Brock Purdy, Matthew Stafford are my one and two. I talk about Brock Purdy every single week, so we're not redundant. Let's go with a different guy. I'm going to roll with Matthew Stafford here, 6000 bucks. Very easy to stack him up, so I'm excited to see how this lineup ends up looking. And also, I don't think it needs to be said, but I guess I do need to keep saying it. I get comments every single week. The purpose of these videos are not to give out a lineup. That is not the reason we're here. I wouldn't talk for 15 minutes trying to break down the process while we do things. I am simply just grabbing a player from each position that we talk about, throwing him in the lineup. That would make sense given the rules that I try to use each and every single week for single entries or three maxes where I typically want two stacking options with my quarterback unless they're mobile, and I think one is fine at that point. And then I try to find a run back. It's not a necessity by any means, but it is something I do prefer doing in the right spots. And moving on to running backs, I think there's three obvious ones that everyone's going to play this week. That'll be Christian McCaffrey at $9,300, Tyron Williams at $7,500, and then we have Zeke Elliott at $5,800 with Stevenson out once again. So I'm thinking that's going to be your chalk three. So if you're someone that plays cash games, People are probably going to start out with Matthew Stafford, CMC, Kyron Williams. I think it's fine having the same running back with your quarterback because of the price tags and the situation that they're in this week. And then Zeke after what we saw on Pittsburgh with his usage, especially in the passing game. So those are going to be the big chalk three. So if you don't want to play the big chalk three, you have to try to find some other guys on here. And while we do have plenty of playable backs, they're just definitely not going to project as well. Let's start up top with CMC, 93 bucks. For some reason, DraftKings just won't price him up to 10K for some reason. So he's going to look like a value every single week, despite being the most expensive player at his position by a long shot. So I haven't projected for 25, 26 points this week, which seems insane. But everything I factor in has him just set a medium projection of a substantial amount compared to everybody else. So yes, he's going to pop in an optimizer an absolute ton this week. But if you look at all the situational variables that we look at every week for running backs he checks almost every single box besides being a big home favorite he's a road favorite a 12 and a half point spread in the his favor highest total of the week at 30 and a quarter good offensive line bad defensive line he's facing they're ranking second worst versus running backs this year 120 rushing yards per game nearly a rushing touchdown and close to 30 fantasy points he gets the volume on the ground he gets the volume through the air he's also efficient over five yards per carry averaging 22 opportunities per game this year with a 19 percent target share so yeah, there is absolutely no reason not to like CMC this week. I'd be very shocked if he does not find the end zone. Kyron Williams, 7,500 bucks. He too, it's a ton of opportunity. Pretty much the exact same as Christian McCaffrey, averaging 21.9 per week, 12% target share, over four targets per game, and 17 and a half carries. He's also been very efficient. Five yards per carry, second highest total of the week. He's the home favorite, six and a half point spread versus the commanders who are currently 23rd versus running backs. And pretty much every single week we've seen Kyron Williams be the starting running back for the Los Angeles Rams. He has produced for fantasy purposes, so no reason to get away here. Saquon Barkley, I don't mind him for tournaments. Kyron Williams will have a ton of ownership, but Saquon also gets a ton of work. I believe he's averaging the most touches per game by any running back this year at 22.7. 17.5% target share, 18 carries per game on the ground as well. It's just not a very exciting offense, but at least they had some life last week. First, the Green Bay Packers. He also found the end zone twice. Devon Chan and Raheem Mostert, it's always hard to know what to do with these guys. Mostert would be the preferred play on Fandle with him being $500 cheaper. On DraftKings, it's a bit of a toss-up, especially since it's PPR. I mean, Chan is going to be the main receiving back. Tua did miss him on a big, big play that could have resulted into a 90-yard touchdown, it looked like, last weekend. But obviously, they didn't connect. Now, Chan is currently questionable for this game. If he happens to be out, we have Raheem Mostert as the main back here. Hard not to like him here as a tournament play at $7,100. He's been a touchdown scoring machine this season, five yards per carry. Just not super involved in the passing game, but we know he's got the upside for it given the opportunity. Also, a nine and a half point spread in the Miami Dolphins' favor. And with Tyree Kill banged up and the Jets having a very tough pass defense, but a pretty soft run defense, allowing the six most points for the position. Definitely a really good spot for both these guys, but I think Raheem Mostert would be the preferred play. Then Rashad Way, the Tampa Buccaneers, obviously not a big threat on the ground, very inefficient this season, 3.7 yards per carry, but where he does make his hay, it's through the air, averaging nearly four catches per game on four targets, 13% target share, and it's a good matchup versus the Packers. There's are currently 26 versus running backs this year, and he's averaging nearly 20 opportunities per game. So at 7,000 bucks, while the price is rising a little bit, I'm still fine with it. Bijan Robinson gets a cakewalk matchup versus the Panthers, and I love the volume increase that we have seen ever since the bye week for the Atlanta Falcons. He's averaging 17 and a half opportunities per game this year, and the Panthers allowing the fourth most points per game in the position. So this is definitely a great spot for Bijan. Like him way more on DraftKings compared to Fandle because he's nearly almost $9,000 over on the blue site. Tony Pollard, I think, is a fine turn up play. Everyone always likes the passing attack on both of these offenses, but Pollard, he's been a little bit more consistent as of late, getting into the teens at least. Touchdowns have risen a little bit, although we still know he's kind of lacking behind from what we've seen in seasons past as far as his efficiency is concerned, but he's now 4.1 yards per carry, averaging 19.5 opportunities per game with involvement 
in the passing game as well with four and a half targets on a 12.2% target share on the season. Plus, it's a good matchup versus Buffalo, who's currently 20th versus running backs this year. Zeke, we already talked about, he's going to be a nice cash game option with no Stevenson. We saw a ton of work on Thursday night versus the Pittsburgh Steelers and a lot of involvement through the air as well, which is going to keep that floor high. And the price is just too low for a guy that's probably going to see 20 plus opportunities in a very boring offense, unfortunately, but the opportunities will certainly be there versus the Chiefs. And if we're going to get dump offs like last weekend, which we're probably going to see as an eight and a half point dog, I do like it. And Brian Robinson is out for the Washington Commanders. And Antonio Gibson is going to slide into a bigger role. But this is a perfect spot for him because at six and a half point dogs, they're going to be throwing the ball quite a bit. And he's definitely the receiving back in this offense. I assume Chris Rodriguez is going to get some work on the ground in between the tackles. But Gibson should carve out a nice role. And if you're playing tournaments, I don't hate him as a run back option either. So moving over to running backs. As much as I love Christian McCaffrey, you, sometimes you just can't fit a guy. Like if you're playing cash games, he's like a starting point. Please play him. But if you're playing tournaments, you don't always have to play every single chalk player in the world. Getting some decent pivots is always a good way to go. So since I have Stafford, that means I want Cooper Cup, I want Puka Nakua, and at that point, I just have my doubts of being able to afford Christian McCaffrey, so if I can afford him at the end, sure, we'll throw him in, but let's save a little bit of money. I know I'm going with the passing attack stack, but that does not mean I just can't play the entire offense. I love the Rams this week. I think they're underpriced, so I'm going to play Kyron as well, and he's going to be involved in the passing game too, so it's not like it's a complete negative with Stafford, because if he's going to get four to five targets, there's a chance one goes into the end zone, so then have the Stafford and Kyron connection, but I don't even mind just locking up the entire offense here. I'm not going to play the tight end as well to do a five-man stack, but I am fine with four for going with a full-on onslaught. Then I need to save some money, and I have no issue going with Zeke down here at 5,800 bucks, and that should allow us to afford guys like Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, who we can see at 7,800 bucks, and then $7,300. And as always, a wide receiver, we try to keep this as simple as possible. I am not the kind of guy that's going to go here and break down each and every single wide receiver versus cornerback matchup, because that is an absolute waste of time. What we do Whatever quarterback we use, we need to find some pass catchers with them. I use Matthew Stafford. That means I'm playing Cooper Cup. I'm playing Puka Nakua. Those are my two pass catchers that I want to stack with. If I'm doing a run back option, Terry McLaurin would be the number one option. You could also look at Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, Logan Thomas. I think I already mentioned that. But whatever quarterback you use, that already kind of locks up a couple spots for you. So while it can be intimidating, having so many wide receiver options every single week, it makes it a bit easier when you are stacking because it's going to lock up those few spots. For cash games, if you're looking for one-offs, and especially the cheap ones, Wandell Robinson, I like a lot. It's at $3,700. I actually used him down the field a little bit last week. He's averaging roughly around five targets per game. He's just cheap. He's going to be on the field. He's going to get targets, so I don't mind that. Had a nice connection with DeVito last weekend. Mario Douglas is going to be back this week, and we've seen when he's the wide receiver one in this offense, he is quite heavily involved. Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs, and no Christian Watson. They get a nice bump, and they're only $49, $5,300. Great matchup versus Tampa Bay. I like those guys quite a bit as lineup fillers, as wide receiver three, wide receiver two in your builds. And even in cash games, I think that's fine as well. Gabe Davis, I have noticed something from Gabe Davis, and that's not the reason he's on here. But every single week this year, he sucks. Decent game. Sucks. Maybe a big game. Sucks. Decent game. I think the past six weeks, he's had three zeros, and it's always in a pattern order where it's hit, no hit, hit, no hit. So very weird with Gabe Davis, but I don't hate him as a tournament play here if you're trying to stack that game up and you can't quite afford a guy like Stephon Diggs with Josh Allen. Before we talked about Garrett Wilson's a fine cash game play. We saw him heavily targeted last week with Zach Wilson. Rasheed Rice is fine. But the rest of these guys, just pair them up with your quarterback, then find some runback options in tournaments, but just stack these guys up. All right, heading up to our build. Let's get our two wide receivers in with Matthew Stafford. Cooper Cup at $7,800 feels a bit cheap. And Pukunuku at $7,300. I shouldn't say that feels a bit cheap because I know it's been a really long, tough stretch for Cooper Cup. But given the matchup, and we did see him play well last week, I guess that's in my mind. But yeah, it's been a rough but he should do well versus Washington. Now, moving on to tight ends, it basically always comes down to, am I stacking with my quarterback? If not, I'm just trying to throw a random cheap guy on there, whoever fits, because tight ends are always a dime a dozen at this point. George Kittle, if you're playing Brock Purdy, that's the only time I'm playing George Kittle, but obviously he's got the upside for it. Facing Arizona, they should be able to steamroll these guys. Don't Kincaid, I'd only play in tournaments, but Dawson knocks back. I was hoping it would just be the Kincaid show, but Knox definitely had a role last week, so that was a bit annoying. And at 5300 bucks, not like really free anymore. Trey McBride, he is basically a wide receiver out there, heavily targeted each and every single week. Tough spot versus San Francisco, but them being 12 and a half point dogs, they're going to throw the ball a ton, and Trey McBride's probably going to soak up the majority of the targets there. Jake Ferguson's just another stacking option with Dak Prescott. He always has touchdown upside. David Njoku, a bit of a resurgence with Joe Flacco, and they're throwing the ball a ton in this offense now. Averaging nearly 45 pass attempts per game in his two starts matchup for Chicago. It's pretty much so-so. This should be a decently ugly game at 38.5 for their over-under three-point spread. But on the season, he's averaging seven targets per game and a 20.5% target share. So he definitely has upside. Two big touchdowns last week. Tucker Craft, Chig, 
Both of these guys are fine as the cheap plays. If you are playing Jordan Love, I don't mind pairing him with Tucker Craft for a really, really cheap stack. And then Chig, he is dirt cheap, decent spot versus Houston. He's averaging nearly five targets per game on a 16.5% target share. So I'll just take the price point. And then for defense, as you guys know, I just scrolled away to the bottom and try to find the first viable looking one. I actually don't hate the Bills at 2,400. They project for 6.8 points for me. That's 2.9x. Obviously, that's nothing to be too excited about, especially with a 24 and a quarter implied team total and a 50 point over under game. I don't hate them at 2,400 bucks if you're looking for a pump play. Other than that, the Panthers, I don't mind 2,800 bucks versus Desmond Ritter. I got them for seven points. The Rams will have some popularity. I got them projected for eight points, playing a home six and a half point favorites. The ones that project the absolute best for me are the Miami Dolphins here at $4,000 with only a 13 point implied T total versus them. But I wouldn't say there's really any standout defenses this week. So I would really just try to throw whichever one fits in at the end. And I wouldn't worry about it too much because, well, obviously some look like better plays than the other. If you just take away the Cardinals because they're probably going to get murdered, I have everyone within like five and a half to 10 points, which hopefully wouldn't kill you either way. All right, so let's finish this lineup off. We have four spots left, $3,900 to do it. But with the cheap tight end and defense, it's not as bad as you may think with our final $15,600. So at tight end, let's just throw in one of those cheap guys because I don't think I can afford one of the more expensive ones. So we're either looking at Tucker Crap or Chick here. I don't mind him at $2,100. bucks. let us plug him in. We're looking for a cheaper defense. We could play the Bills at $2,400. Or if we want to spend up a little bit, we might have the money to make like the Browns work versus Justin Fields at home. I wouldn't hate that. We also have the Titans with no CJ Stroud, Nico Collins, or Tank Dell. They actually might be in play as well. But at $3,700, wasn't realizing they're that expensive. Doesn't look as appealing as it could be. So let's just, I would like the Rams, but I kind of want the Washington Commanders to fight back a little bit. So let's just plug in the Browns here at 3,500 bucks. And if we have to spend down, we will do it. I like Ronda Robinson at $3,700 at wide receiver. That gets me some value. And that would leave me $5,500 for the remaining spot. And unfortunately we are $100 off, which would be a pretty nice looking tournament lineup because we could have Terry McLaurin there at 5,600 bucks. Now, Jerome Ford paired the Browns defense. I wouldn't hate it as a correlation play. Some of these guys are not bad. Looking, you have Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed. But if I wanted to go the Terry McLaurin route, I have no problem dropping my defense to someone at $3,400. We could just play the Texans versus the Titans. We could play the Bears versus the Browns. Any of these would be fine. So if we just throw in Terry here at $5,500, just pick whatever defense you want. I don't think that's a bad looking GPP build for, of course, a single entry or three max. That's a bit chalky. But in those types of contests, you don't have to go completely crazy. Just a couple of pivots is fine. We have Matthew Stafford paired with Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, ran back with Terry McLaurin, Kyron Williams, Zeke at the running back position, Wanda Robinson for value, Chig as well, and then throw in every defense you find fitting. And I don't think that's terrible looking. But the point that I'm trying to get across here is that I like the Rams this week. So you can stack it up whichever way you would like. And as always, I just run the optimizer here to see who's populating the most as of right now. It's Friday morning, so a lot can change by the time Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon kicks off for us. So keep that in mind, and these are not the exact projections, but I do have a little bit of randomness on and some stacking settings, very light. So we'll just see what pops up here, and this will give you guys a good idea of who's going to be popular on Sunday afternoon. And as you can see, CMC, Kyron Williams, Wanda Robinson, Matthew Stafford, Puka Nakua, five most guys getting jammed in here, and yeah, I'm not really surprised about that. All guys that I expect to be very popular this weekend. I'm pretty sure Antonio Gibson's only popping this much because I have a required bring back option in my stacks and since it has so much of the rams Antonio gibson's popping a bit because i believe he's only 50 5200 a lot of the pass catching options for washington can always be a bit sporadic so i understand having gibson showing up a lot also zeke a ton terry mclaurin chig bill's defense slayton a little bit surprising but he is free but yeah not really too surprised with anybody else noah brown's currently questionable so i have to see if he plays but that texans offense looking like a bit of a mess this weekend, the Rams, Washington, 49ers, not too surprised about those teams populated the most. Not getting a ton of that Buffalo-Dallas game, but keep in mind I have no exposure settings on here, so it's really hard to say what I could actually get it to. Not surprised that's the most popular game, Arizona versus San Francisco, getting popped a ton. And yeah, ownership-wise, these are definitely going to be the two most popular games this weekend, so not really anything that shocks me with that being said that's all i got for this week's video so hope you enjoyed if you did make sure you like down below subscribe to the channel if you're brand new if you have any questions leave them down below i'm more than happy to answer them but i wish you all the best of luck this week and i'll see you all next time